So I've done plenty of videos with different millionaires about mistakes in getting started. I actually think this will be the first time I have talked about this in 13,000 videos. How could we have actually gone faster? Who the heck doesn't want to go faster? We were going to bring Dion and Matt on to talk about this. Guys, how you doing, Matt? What's going on? I'm doing great. Excited to be here on a Wednesday. I took a, about five or six days off of doing anything, and it was wonderful. Yeah, so thank you very much. A little sleepy. I think one of the last <laughs> things you did was our school community. You did a, a one-hour session. I'm it still was. waiting that for that link. <laughs> it was. That was the last thing. Literally, I walked out of my studio that day, and I haven't been back since. Nice, nice. Well, don't yeah. forget you owe me a link. I promise uh, today. Awesome. Guaranteed. Dion, what's going on? Howdy. I'm doing great. I'm does speed matter? Well, I get asked all. Well, speed fast, doesn't mama. matter. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, yeah. inertia, speed. I, you know, I don't know. I just think it's an interesting idea because we're we're all three of us now are on the other side of this, <laughs> and it all took us what it took. For me, it was fifteen years. Matt, I think, was fourteen ish years. Dion, eight or nine, something like that. But I just thought about it. You know, we're, you know, we probably average a decade. I'm just curious, are there things that you could have done in your journey to make it go faster? Because I don't know about you, six years to financial freedom is better than 10. Yeah. You know? Yep. Mine was 15. 11 would have been better than 15. <laughs> so that that's uh, that was what I was thinking about. So I know there's some things I could have done different in hindsight, but uh, I thought I'd go to you guys. Uh, Dion, you actually went the quickest if we're counting years. So maybe I'll start with you. Um, have you thought about some things you might've been able to do quicker or faster? Well, I, th I think the thing that people really need to understand is that you can absolutely get rich quick. If you invest aggressively for 10 years, mm -hmm. the problem is convincing people that 10 years is quick. Yeah. And yes, that's a quote I saw in the book of faces this morning, which I thought was a brilliant quote because I thought 10 years would be doable, right? If five years would be quicker, would be better. But I didn't know, I didn't have the confidence that it would be doable to sit back in those first few years that suck unless I set the goal of 10 years. Mm. And I made the same mistake that you made, Zuber. And it, like you, I don't look at it as a regret. I just look at it mathematically. This, this would have sped things up. In the first eight years of my investing, I only house hacked once. Mm. Now, you didn't house hack at all, right? And you've said yourself, you you should have or could have i would have loved to do what matt did and you know house sack rinse repeat rinse repeat rinse repeat i got into that first duplex and then i stayed mm -hmm. until 2020 when I bought fourplex and house sack oh, wow. the second time and sat back and thought i moved across town and i'm making 2500 dollars more a month without doing anything different period just just that one's rented out now this one cash flows with me living in it that would have cut yeah. off. Yeah, I think that idea of just going in with a plan to to house hack four or five times, I think really accelerates the process. You get the best rates, the least down. Uh -huh. um, you could stay a little longer here or there based on the deal flow. Um, I absolutely agree with you, the lumberjack. Of the, the the three of us did it right. I you know, my my. I don't have many regrets, but you're right. One of them is I didn't buy a fourplex when I was 20 years old in the in the Silicon Valley. That that one purchase, you know, it would have been multi seven figures at this point uh, in mm -hmm. hindsight. So I uh, I totally agree with that. Having a and I want to give a shout out to Sarah. Uh, she did something similar. She just uh, she's a military. She did her 20 years in the military, but she used the phone as her plan. Right, every place mm -hmm. she, her duty station changed, she she did it again. And folks. It's, Plan the 10 years. I did not plan the 10 years. I've, I've told everybody my plan was four units and my plan was to work till I was 65. I just, I didn't even, dude, you said 10 years was, I didn't even think, I didn't even think it was possible. Right. It just wasn't in the right headspace. So yeah, that that's, that's great advice. How about you, Matt? What's, what's something you could have done? Maybe go fast. Uh, I would have uh, slowed down to speed up. I would have, how's that for a Dionism? I know uh, what happened. I'm there? learning. What's I'm learning Dion. I'm learning. Um, I did too many too close together when I started Oh, and yeah. it was because I could, it was because I could. And so I did five in my first two years. It was because I could. And so when the great financial crisis hit, I was on razor's edge because right. I had repairs. I had all of these things that I had people stop paying rent. 
So in order to speed up and go faster, I would have slowed down and done fewer. I would have had a lot more capital and I could have bought a lot more distressed assets instead of the yeah. few distressed assets I was able to buy. So I would have slowed down to speed up. Um, the other thing I would have done is I would have um, pushed a lot more on getting money from others. Mm. Everything I did was 100% self-funded and bank funded. So yeah. <clears throat> it was self-funded from the perspective. It was either me or my credit and credentials. It was one of the, it was one of the three th or all the three things. Mm -hmm. So I would have slowed down to speed up and I would have taken on a lot more debt. I mean, hindsight's 2020, but I would have loved to have taken on, I mean, that market at that point, there were 50 to 55 small multifamilies in my market available for purchase every day. Yeah. And that was a problem because now my market is three. My market's three. I have no yeah. inventory to buy from. The stuff that's out there is outrageously expensive and quite frankly, only works with a house hack. Right. And so, yeah, the biggest thing that I could have done to wow. drastically speed things up was do a lot fewer when I first started and do a lot more with the capital um, instead of spending it on improvements and just trying to keep my head above water. It would have been a lot easier to keep my head above water if I had one triplex and one duplex instead of- right two triplexes and two single family homes and a duplex. That would have been a yeah. lot smarter. I love that. I love that. It's it's really interesting because when I think about my first four years, we go from eight, we're, we're at the end of four years, we're at 80 units. That, that's pretty fast, right? That's we, crazy. Yeah. We call, we call it the top. I mean, it's, it's funny yeah. when we talk about housing, we got eight units, eight houses, I guess seven houses in a duplex or six houses in a duplex. They were houses nonetheless. Anyways, eight units. And that became 80 because we got out at the right time, 1031 exchange. Um, but really, when I think about my first four years, the thing that I got wrong, like really wrong, is I thought I could do it all myself. Mm. And I, sh I should have been networking more because, again, you guys, you, you both of you invested in a market you live in. Yes. Right. I didn't. Right. I, I chose a market two and a half hours away. No experience, no friends, no nothing. I should have been networking day one. Sure. Uh, I would have made less mistakes. I would have probably had to fire less property managers. I would have had less rework. I would have, I just, the fact that I used being busy as the excuse for not doing the simple things of networking, even back then, pre social media, I could have sent emails. I could have, I could have done, I could have picked up the phone. I could have texted. We still could, we could text on Blackberries, right? I, um, I just wasn't in the right room and I wasn't in the right room around the right people, right? Mm -hmm. I was so focused on my day job and doing this one little 20 minutes a day buy box thing that I never, I never tried to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And today when I see what we're doing, right? The Vegas event, the school thing. You got to be around other people going the same direction. Sure, you get validation, you get questions. You can help them; they can help you. Um, you know, there's this old saying about you know you're you're the average of your five friends. I think it even it's even more important than that. Like, what's important to you? You want to be in shape? Let me see your five friends. I'll tell you what shape you're in. You want to be a millionaire? Show me your five friends. I can tell you right. And I simply got lucky because I'm broken. I'm just broken, right? I'm wired to, you know, look at doom on monotonous things. It, I got lucky. I, sh I should, I should have been networking. Now that changed at like year eight or nine. Uh, and then to your point, we started doing private money again, totally by accident. If I was mm. in the right rooms, we could be twice our size, probably three times our size. Yeah. Because again, sure. everything I've done, I stumbled across. It's, it's just wild for me to think about. Yeah, there's there's two ways I look at it where when, when I talk about it being 10 years and I can break it down where the first five years sucked, the next five years were so weirdly amazing like <laughs> so fast. And I often think it's because we have a ramp up time, right? Mm -hmm. Two years to buy the first duplex, two years to buy the next duplex, then the cash flow starts to go. And if I really look back, about the five year point would have been around 2018 when this little community one rental at a time came out yeah. and I found this book. And uh, I, I, I look at the book and I go, this is the playbook of everything I've done for the last four years. And if I had this in year one, it wouldn't have taken me four years to figure out these things to do. So if you get in those rooms like the school community and you think, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with guys like Frank, 
right? He's there, he's an old guy already. He's a handyman. Shows me how to do things here. You talk with people who are starting out now that have the challenges of starting out now, and we're investing now where we're not starting out now, and we realize, well, it's a little easier when we're not just starting out now. I totally get that, but here's what I would do if I was starting out. So you get in that room in that in those those meetings with those people, and I, I completely agree. And then you do do things like I look at the last year. If I incorporated the Burr strategy about in the middle of my investing, so not the beginning, not the first few years when I was figuring things out, but about halfway through, I could have done this Burr. Mm -hmm. I would have it would have blown up in my face. But I do something like take the Lumberjack Landlords course where I figure out, okay, these simple tweaks to what I'm doing can get me more rents. Here's how I do my kitchen to save me about, I don't know, but I want to say about eight grand is what Matt's course saved me on that to get it to come out the way it does. If I did not halfway through, because this created out of thin air, a minimum of $200,000 on, on the high end, it's three fifty, but I can guarantee absolutely 200. If I had done that in the middle, and then recycle capital, like you guys talked by being in the room with people who are doing that. 10 years would have been seven and seven would have been more money than I had at 10. Right. So if you want it faster, join school, take Lumberjack's course. If you want it in 10 years, the lazy way worked. Yeah. And again, 10 years is not bad. I'm not, none of us yeah. are saying that's bad. I mean, most people would sign up for that today. Right. Sacrifice, do this for 10 days and the rewards are there. Most people would take that. But I do think there's just little things uh, that we could do. Yeah. And it's only with hindsight. Right. It's only with hindsight sure. that we now see these things. So we'll go back the other way. We'll go to you next, Matt. Um, do you have another one that you think about that maybe helped you go a little faster? Yeah. I mean, Dion's binder strategy method, that would have helped out everybody. Everybody. How much yeah. money? There's not a landlord, if they're being honest. There's not a landlord on the planet that would raise their hand when you said, did you raise rents when you should have raised rents? The room would not have a hand in it because they just don't all this bullshit on the, you know, on the interwebs about how landlords raise rent every chance we get. It's not factually true at all. And they clearly aren't a landlord and they don't know any either. Um, so if you have something like the binder method, which makes even the shyest of people, and the least confrontational of people gives them the ability to still get the rent increases that they need. That is the, that is the Warren Buffett compounding interest model that everybody looks for in every business. And if you have the ability to compound that interest one year after the next, after the next, I just bought a property that hadn't had rents raised in 10 years. Oh, there's a reason I got it for 5%. There's a reason that I got it. And he was just like, I just can't afford to keep it anymore. I don't want to keep it anymore. I'm, I'm having to fix things out of my own pocket. Well, it's because you're dumb. Yeah, that's Sorry. Right. Sorry. It's, you're you just dumb. Yeah. You didn't yeah. do the binder method. You didn't stay up with current market rents. And factually, did he not spend? And the crazy thing is, I didn't spend that money because the rents weren't going up. Well, you couldn't spend that money because you weren't raising the rent. So it, did, it wasn't something that happened to you. You're not a victim landlord. You were dumb. You didn't do the things that you were supposed to do. And it is add value first, curate experience first, request third. That's what yeah. the idea is. Because you want to maintain it. People want to stay in nice places. And I give this example all the time. It takes 60 seconds. Here's the example every single time. Oh, my landlord, my landlord's awesome. He never raises my rent. That's quite, that's years one through three. Year four, yeah, there's starting to be some stuff broken around here. I've asked him to fix it and he just hasn't fixed it. And then the next three years, they're complaining because the landlord kind of sucks, and but he still hasn't raised rents, but the landlord kind of sucks. And then year seven or year eight, they, they're they just like, you know what? We're just sick and tired of this. We want a nicer place. We're just going to go and get a nicer place because we're moving up in the world. We have eight years worth of raises, different jobs. We're, we're getting out of this dump. And then they leave the landlord who's kept their rent the same for eight years. And what's the landlord supposed to do with that new tenant? Hey, bad news. Special assessment on the roof. Your share is eight grand. Mm. Special assessment on the heating system. Your share is five grand. No, you can't do that to a tenant. And so you have to do, it has to be over time for these. There's a reason that the, the tax law depreciates these items over five, seven, 20 or 29 and a, or 27 and a half or even 39 and a half years. There's a reason tax law does that. So don't 
be a bad landlord and not raise your rents on your tenants like you should in order to curate the experience that you want them to have. There's a reason why I have a 0.65% vacancy right now. There's a reason why I'm almost never over 1%. And it's because we curate experience. We're not afraid of turnover, but we've also taken the time to make sure that we're getting the rents that we should be so we can continue to do and improve the property because I've had to do 20 kitchens in the last 18 months. There you go. So yeah, the binder method leads to that because that's what leads to the excess capital and the compounding capital. That's what leads to that. So you can do those things and give your tenants the best experience. And I think the binder is such a key hack, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to be self-management. If you're not self-managing, get your property manager to do it. But the Absolutely. idea with the binder strategy is so elegant, such a Dionism, is you get the tenant to ask for the rate increase. Because all the other times you get, a, you're, you're just the jerk landlord. Always. But if you let the if you let the tenant go, hey, you know, I see what's going on, blah blah blah. Can you do this? And this is always less than the peak. You at best have a content, and probably. Mm -hmm you know, a happy tenant in, in many cases. So you're right. I think the binder strategy is, is a must. Dan, what else you got? So, so before I get to the thing that I have, mm -hmm. um, in the school community, if you are an investor that has a tenant turnover coming up, reach out to Mike and let's set up a time where together me and you, the person that has a tenant turnover will make your binder in a Ooh. school. Hall. We'll do it together. We'll get it in set school. up chronologically, wow. exactly how you do it. We'll go through how you present it. The, the data that you'll use, where you'll get it from. And uh, so we'll have that call. And that'll take a little work. I, 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 sorry, sorry to spend your time. No, no. So I just want to make sure I want to make sure you schedule the call. I want to make sure I heard it correctly. What you're basically going to do is you're going to take a school member who has a, a you know, a tenant uh, re lease renewal coming up. You're going to walk him or her through the entire process, getting the binder, recording it. That way, the next school person could watch the replay and see how to, that's what that's what we're talking about doing here. So yeah, I, I think I said tenant turnover. Thanks. No, it's it, a lease renewal coming up. What we'll do is in the Zoom call, you know, I'll, I'll go and I'll share screens. I'll find the yep. location. I'll have to show the exact address. Yeah. And I'll say, here's the data that I would use. Here's the comps I would use. Here's the section wow. info, PAH info, uh, all all the data points that I'm going to present to the tenant and how I would do it, and take screenshots and send them yep. to that. Person. So they all they have to do is print the binder, nice. and they take it and do it, or email it if they do it the way Matt does. And so that was the thing. That yeah, I think, I think that would be great because again, the whole idea with the school community is do it once and every watch it on repeat. So uh -huh. we're going to get a hands-on binder inside the school community. Uh, that is awesome. All right. What do you got? Cool. So uh, I think when you uh, gave the title to this and you said, let's talk, how could we have done it faster? I, I don't know if it was all three of us, but me, it was okay. So here's when I started. Here's when I was able to retire. How do I shorten that? I want to look at it from here's when I was born. Here's yeah. when I retired. How do I shorten that? Because I lost a decade because of one sentence. This I do. One sentence stopped <laughs> me from investing for 10 years. I heard the, I heard the sentence over and over and I thought, wow, I'm never going to invest. And when uh -huh. I had the epiphany that corrected this sentence, I started investing. So had I had this epiphany sooner, I could have invest. I could have reached financial freedom faster. My brother invested in real estate and he kept saying, and he's got it down to five or six years now, but he would say, whenever I buy a property in 11 years, I get my money back. And it's a, it's a great statement, right? He would he invest $100,000 to buy it. And in 11 years, he's made $100,000. And I thought, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. You have $100,000 or $5,000, whatever the number is, and you invest it so that 11 years later, you can have the money back. Yeah. It's a long commitment to just get your money back. And then I finally had that moment where I realized that's not what he meant. Hmm. He doubled right. the money in that amount of time because when we invest in properties, we don't spend money. Correct. We move it. We take the money from the bank and we put it in the property. His money was still there the whole 11 years. While yeah. he was getting the money to double it, he could have cashed out refinance. He could have taken out a home equity line of credit. He could have sold in 1031 or sold and, and paid tax and kept the money. And I was just thinking, I'm not going to lock my money up for 11 years just to get it back. That I'm, yeah. I'm never going to. That's dumb. I, that I would dumb. agree with you. <laughs> and then I, I realized agree. I'm going to I'm going to move and purchase this last place just because it was bothering not just but one of the reasons is because it was bothering me to have money sitting in the bank. It's now sitting in a property where we talked earlier in the video. 
gener just magically out of thin air, creating a couple hundred thousand dollars that didn't exist because I moved the money from the bank to a property. And had yeah. I done that sooner, I love that. I would have, I love I would have that. done this while well, I still had hair. Yeah, the, the I don't thing know if it that... was that long ago. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, the last one I'll talk about, because again, this is just self-reflection. My journey didn't start till I was 30 after losing all that money in the stock market. And I still think it's embarrassing, right? Of the three of us, I have the most education. I got an under degree, undergraduate degree in economics. I went back and got an MBA. I was an accountant. It was my first full-time job. And I didn't know dick about rental properties until I read that stupid purple book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I still think it's... It is unfathomable to me that the idea of owning a rental property doesn't hit me until I stumble on that book in borders. It's I nobody, nobody in my, I'm 30 years old. I'm making six figures a year. And this, I, this freaking purple book turns on a light bulb. I, I still think it's shocking. I think it's funny that you say you're the most educated because I'm just sitting over here with my PhD. <laughs> <laughs> public, public high school high. diploma <laughs> and matt with his eighth grade diploma yeah, not hey i made it i think i made it out of the ninth grade i mean oh, technically I the, you dropped out there, in the ninth grade there, but yeah there was so. there was there was definitely there was definitely some consternation over saying that i was a ninth grader ah uh, <laughs> there was like I was, like we're you, you've only been here like 50 days i was like <laughs> i mean one day i mean as well i look at it ninth grade dropout there you go nailed it Nailed it. Yeah, so I don't I don't think the way to do this faster is to go out and get more degrees. I think it's to go out and no. meet the people who've done what you want to do, For sure, figure yes. out how they did it, and incorporate that into what you're doing. Yeah, which you kind of really, just get in the right rooms. Sorry. Really funny. What's really crazy, and this is no offense to you college educated people. I'm just a dumb ninth grade dropout. But what's really amazing is they are the ones that will buck the system the most on buying education. Are you joking? Are you joking? You're the worst at making the decision to buy education, but you lit on fire and are probably still paying your college loans in your forties. And you're saying education was the problem. No, no, no. Education's not the problem. Who you decided to pay to learn from was that was the problem. So that's the, that's my favorite argument. Now I was talking to somebody who actually has a PhD and I was like, well, why don't you buy some, because she's not a very good investor, honestly. And I said, why don't you buy some courses? And she goes, no, nah, I think they're all a sham. I go, uh. you spent about 300 on your PhD. How's that working out for you? <laughs> You're looking for a side hustle. that's working out so well. So yeah. all I would say is respect the fact that education works and largely speaking, there's a reason it works. You're you're getting somewhere that you can't get yeah. yourself, and you're certainly doing what we talk about in this video, accelerating. That's the key. Yeah, I would tell someone. You know, I have a, I have a pretty distasteful taste on most education. I would I would agree with that. But you've got to you've got to research the person doing it. Make sure they've actually done. They just haven't read books. That's why I love that what we've been doing on YouTube, the guys. We've been talking together since I think 2019. Right, that's five yeah, right freaking years. Yeah, yeah, it's about a thousand videos. We got plenty of receipts. You can go back and check us out. Um, yeah, I think that's wild. I think that's wild. Uh, well, Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, this uh, this weekend, I will be doing a live. I didn't do one this last weekend, but this weekend I'm doing a live. I'll be driving down for Ashley's grandfather's 90 something birthday. And so I'm literally doing my live stream from the road. And so oh I told Ashley, I said, wow. no better way than to turn the time. She's like, sounds good. So we're so I think it's going to be a lumberjack and Mrs. Lumberjack live this Sunday. Wow, mm -hmm. I like. So who's who's the driver on that long journey? <laughs> Do you even need to ask? I just was, only yeah, make just, only oh, make. Oh, I've seen that right. drive. She needs a Xanax. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. He's too used to trying to move hundred ton vehicles. Yeah, That's exactly. The problem. I, everything I'm in is nimble, comparatively speaking. <laughs> And that's very good. Yeah, that's, that's right. Dion, so, how, how about you? You can find me here on YouTube and you can go back every single year since we've been talking in 2019. I started my channel, ironically, January 6th, 2021. So we were talking, I was on your channel a few times yeah. before that. It's a weird date, but January 6th, 2021, when I started my YouTube channel, you'll find a video 
in 2021, 2022, 2023, no real estate crash. I've never changed the title or the thumbnail, and I'm making one on 2024 coming up here, proving why there isn't one coming right around the corner. Well, a crash will happen. This isn't the year, and those weren't the years. So you can go back and look at all those crash bro videos and think, why did these not crash videos get a thousand views? Mm -hmm. And I make videos like I'm doing on Thursday on why you need to retire early because of the parking lot theory. Stay tuned for that. Guys, you're amazing. Thank you for all you do. Dion, thank you for the gift with the binder strategy. I think that's going to be a very sought after replay. So uh, much appreciated. Th thanks, guys.